started this pursuit about 25 minutes ago and has continued to basically put this in and out of tracking mode because you can see just how dangerous this is getting going the wrong way here on Alameda. Now, this has been a very dangerous pursuit throughout. However, they have given the go-ahead for a pit maneuver if they have the opportunity to even re-engage this pursuit. Right now, they have right now they have not stand by right now they have not re-engaged the pursuit they're having trouble just trying to catch up with the suspect as he continues down Alameda he's been kind of reversing course here and zigzagging his way through South LA but you can see just how busy it is on a Friday evening as he tries to negotiate this intersection with lots of cross traffic you can see the two-tone it's a Dodge Challenger Dodge Charger Dodge Challenger you know I think it's a Dodge is a Dodge yeah Dodge I have Dodge Challenger, uh, is flying, Mark, just flying the wrong way. Gonna have trouble. Yeah, he's having a hard time uh, main maintaining control at these speeds, a lot of hard braking as he approaches traffic at many of these intersections. Another busy one right there, right through it with lots of traffic there. You saw somebody trying to turn there. He is going about 70 to 80 miles per hour down Alameda Street. He's now been in Alameda for a good few minutes here, and that may provide them with an opportunity for a spike strip, but you can see there's just so much traffic in the area, it's gonna be very difficult to set up for that, but at the very least, they can at least get units ahead of him and try and plan accordingly. It's a very difficult pursuit for LAPD, especially at these speeds. Again, he is flying down Alameda, heavily tinted windows, we do not know how many people are inside that vehicle, but they do have tactics at their disposal if they can get units in position. Right now, it's really up to the air unit to call out the location and then get those, look at this! Oh, lots of close calls here. I mean, this is just unbelievable. He has not shown any signs of slowing down despite all of the traffic and the amount of traffic that he's encountering is remarkable, uh, especially, uh, I mean, just trying to think back in recent memory, a pursuit with this much traffic. Again, on a Friday night, you don't, you would expect that kind of traffic, but you just don't expect to see a pursuit going this fast through these various busy intersections as he continues, continues down Alameda Street. goodness that was right near fire he's, that was right near bandera street all, along firestone boulevard he's made a right turn onto firestone now and he is just zooming down firestone we have seen so many cro close calls again almost a miracle at this point that there have not been any collisions that we are aware of but he is continuing to push the pedal to the metal through these intersections at some points barely even breaking but really able to swerve around anybody in his way there but a number of very close calls within inches of that last vehicle who was trying to cross the intersection here he's easily going over the double yellow lines at times going the wrong way wherever he has an opportunity and now he's coming up on a little bit heavier traffic here for the first time slowing down they don't have anybody in the area at least I don't see any sirens in the area but right now he's we is he behind the tree or is he up ahead go up ahead up ahead up ahead there he is, there he is, weaving across lanes here, using maybe a bicycle lane to try and get around this traffic at Zamora. He's along Firestone Boulevard. Again, what I was about to say uh, uh, was that I don't see any units in the area uh, that are prepared to intercept this pursuit. And so right now, we do have LAPD's airship calling it out, but putting this in tracking mode has not worked to their benefit and it has not had the desired effect of calming this driver down or taking any of the pressure off the driving tactics have been extremely reckless, extremely dangerous, regardless of who's behind them.
Well, that's that's another thing. He keeps turning his lights on and off at various points. He's been driving blacked out without any headlights. You don't even see the guy coming. Right now, he does have his headlights on, but they've been on and off over the course of this pursuit repeatedly. Now he's on a surface street here along 81st Street, going a little bit slower. He better. I mean, it's really a very narrow road right there. That's a residential street right there, 81st, making a turn possibly or just negotiating another intersection as he continues much slower now for the first time doing just under maybe uh, maybe 15, 20 miles per hour down that street there, and whereas there's obviously much less traffic. We'll see if he's looking for another major here or if he starts to speed up down 81st Street, but right now uh, we are negotiating with uh, uh, LAX's uh, air, tra air traffic controls. We uh, come through the right turn there, that's Avalon Boulevard, and he's slowing down a little bit. You can see the driving behavior has changed uh, slightly here as he makes his way further west. Uh, but right now we don't see, still at this point, no sign of any black and whites in the area. Is he over to the, yeah, this is very tough. We're gonna go ahead and pan over to the right a little bit, Brian. Over to the right, nope, a little more. There he is, there he is, that's him, that's him, that's him. Yep, no, I understand. Here he goes. Off to the races now, northbound San Pedro Street. He's on the correct side at this moment. He's dragging something it almost looked like there for a second. Another busy intersection in oncoming lanes, making a left turn on Florence Avenue, trying to, man, just trying to squeeze through any cars. I mean, there were cars going in all different directions in that intersection. He was able to manage, manage to kind of weave his way through here. He's done that numerous times in the past 15 minutes. I mean, this is just so scary, the way he's driving. I cannot believe that we have not seen any collisions, but this has a recipe for disaster if he continues driving like this, especially at these intersections without even slowing down. Once again, pedal to the metal northbound Main Street at 69th Street, going north in towards downtown LA here, coming behind these apartment buildings. We are on the east side of the 110 freeway, trying to negotiate with air traffic control here as they manage a very busy airspace on a Friday night. You can see he's continuing northbound Main Street here, slowing down just slightly, but lots of traffic in the area here with a, a lot of pedestrian traffic as well in this area on any given night. So this is going to be uh, just a, a hard-pounding pursuit no matter how you slice it. Uh, I just hesitate to, to, to even guess how this is going to end. But right now he is continuing northbound Main Street into the downtown area here in the next mile or so. On the wrong way. Oof. Well, a pit maneuver would require somebody to get behind him. And at these speeds and the way he's driving, they are having a hard time getting units behind him, especially with all of the traffic. The traffic is a real issue tonight on all of these surface streets. You can see every turn he makes almost, you're seeing a lot of volume, an occasional straightaway here, and that just gives him an opportunity to go even faster. Uh, so if they can get somebody behind him, maybe they can cut him off at one of these intersections and just kind of slam up against that back bumper. But, uh, you know, the pit maneuver, while it's been authorized, is really not even a factor at this point. And really, neither is a spike strip. Now he's underneath the 110 freeway. Uh, looks like he might be on Slauson there. Going to come out the other side. Is he going to come out the other side? Or will he keep going? There, no, no, no. He did not come out. He did not come out. No. Did, did he? Did he foot bail? Did he foot bail? That's the question. It has not come out. Uh, con c confirmation, this car has not come out, at least not yet. 
under the freeway. We're going to come around the other side of the freeway here. You can see units making their way under the freeway. At least they are in the area here. Uh, the vehicle may have been dumped under the freeway. I saw somebody flying out the other side, but that may have been a different vehicle. Uh, he may very well still be underneath the freeway, guys, if he is. He's gotten into another vehicle. I'm hearing he's gotten into another vehicle. Okay, let's pan over to the right, and let's see which way he goes. Let's see which way he goes. He may have carjacked another car, guys. He's apparently gotten into a truck under the freeway. Trying to, trying to listen in here and eavesdrop on LAPD, but right now, Westbound, he's going westbound under in a red charger. He's gotten into it from, from, a, from a Challenger to a red charger. Uh, that was a, a, a gray and black Challenger. He's dumped the vehicle and is apparently, according to LAPD, in a red charger. You see somebody running, go ahead and Push in there, push in there. Let's see what we can make out here. Unfortunately, we can't get much closer. These are pedestrians. I don't think, there's a, no, th those are cops. They are cops, and they are running back towards their vehicles under the freeway. He may be stuck in traffic as he tries to. Stand by, stand by. Hoover, Hoover and Slauson. Hoover and Slauson. He was just spotted at Hoover and Slauson. They're trying to make their way over there. That's Hoover and Slauson. Behind us, behind us, behind us, behind us. Over here, over, right out, right out my left window, guys. Right out my left window, there he is. There he is. They're focusing on that red car right there. And we'll go ahead and confirm the make and model of that vehicle here in just a second. But they are focusing on that red car right there. That looks like a Chrysler. It's a Chrysler 300, not a Dodge Charger. It's a Chrysler 300 that they are now after. You can see the night sun from LAPD up above. Those units that you saw back there at the 110 were trying to get back to their vehicles and now kind of uh, weave their way down here. Uh, we'll see what the driving is like here, but right now he is going about the speed limit on Hoover Street with all eyes on him. Uh, we'll see if this is indeed him. They're, they have good information uh, to believe that this may be that suspect, but judging from the driving here, this just seems almost too composed compared to what we were witnessing just a few minutes ago. He could be, very possible. Well, here comes LAPD, here comes LAPD. They've got their eyes on him, they've got their light on him, and we'll see if this is indeed that suspect. He may be trying to blend in here, but they have found him, and we'll see if it is indeed the suspect. The LAPD now pulling up from the left and the right. Officers out of their vehicles with their guns drawn. The driver, driver cooperating, stepping out of the vehicle. This is Hoover and Vernon, the intersection of Hoover and Vernon. This driver looks oblivious, but again, it very well could be. You're saying a passenger in the passenger seat. So we will see, they will first order him out of the vehicle and then the passenger, uh, whether that's a willing passenger or whether that, I doubt it. I mean, I would have, presumably if this was indeed a carjacked vehicle would be, uh, well, anything's possible. There could have been numerous people that got out of the, the charger and then jumped in this car, always a possibility, or this could have been a passenger who was under duress uh, along for the ride here, if this is even the vehicle, but they certainly believe it is. Uh, and you can see everybody now converging on this Chrysler 300 uh, that has come to a stop here. The driver proned out on the pavement. The next step will be taking that passenger out, and then they're gonna have a lot to sort out here to figure out whether these are the two suspects they're looking for or what the story is here, but something is not adding up. We'll see, these may very well be the two guys, but uh, right now that passenger walking backwards in the direction of LAPD, and a lot of confusion back here. Yeah, I can hear you. 
Go ahead. Yeah, well, just to let you know, we're going to be working 2,000 a blow. We're on a pursuit over here with the city and the county helicopters for a suspect wanted for homicide. We're ready, guys. All you got to do is just come to me. Okay. Monroe Street. Potomac Sky Team 11. This may end up going southbound on 95. We'll give you a heads up. And if you just go ahead and put us as a flight of three right now uh, in case we uh, get closer to BWI. All right, thank you. It's a homicide suspect. City. This vehicle is wanted in reference to a homicide. I'm not sure exactly where the homicide took place, but we are actually going southbound on Monroe Street, headed underneath I-95 right now as we speak. The city helicopter and the county helicopter are both involved in following this individual. Numerous ground units have been advised as to where the guy is going and his position right now, but it's been a crazy uh, operation that they've been dealing with now here. It started in the southern district, went over to the southwest district, and is now back into the southern district, headed down towards Cherry Hill. Uh, we're Getting a little on the busy side here right now, but we're still monitoring it. Oh, it looks like he's going to try to head over towards uh, the BW Parkway 295, and it looks like we may be going, uh, heading back towards the city right now on the uh, BW Parkway. So a crazy chase happening right now. We'll monitor it as we can. We will update you as you can, but unless you guys have any questions, we're going to send it back to you in the studio as we're getting just a little busy up here between air traffic and following this individual. As it pursues on, we'll take keep you updated. Reporting live at Sky Team 11, I'm Captain Roy Taylor. No, it's uh, not. He's heading towards Washington Boulevard. Well, unfortunately, he's just running around in circles. All right, sounds good. Guys, I've got it set up with Potomac as a flight of three in case we end up going to 195.
Well, push shoves, I got a full tank. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, he's going to go northbound. He might stroke it off on Hanover Street. Hanover Street. Potomac Sky Team, I would like to go ahead and switch over towards PWI Tower. We're going to be going into their airspace. He's headed down there towards Cherry Hill. Thank you. Hello, Tower. Helicopter Sky Team 11 checking in with you. 2,000 below flight of three helicopters. We're involved in the pursuit right now. Flight of three helicopters. Uh, we're working towards uh, PWI. We're ready. Yes, we understand that this vehicle is wanted in reference to a homicide. Law enforcement officer, city police tried to stop the vehicle in the southern and southwest district. The vehicle took off. They called for assistance from their police helicopter, Foxtrot, as well as the county. We ended up spotting the vehicle uh, around the Wilkins Avenue area, and that appears this individual is working his way down towards Cherry Hill. We just got off of... Uh, Hanover Street, and we're working our way pretty much towards the Cherry Hill area in the Southern District. Uh, we don't know how this is going to turn out, but he's been doing everything he can to elude police. It's just going to be difficult with three helicopters sitting over top of him for him to get away. We're still trying to get more information on this pursuit that is in the city, but like you said, we understand the individual is wanted in reference to a homicide. And as we get more on this, or if he gets apprehended, we will advise you. Reporting live in Sky Team 11, I'm Captain Roy Taylor.
heading back towards the city. No, I don't know who it is. Well, he's blocked him with traffic up here. Christ. Okay. I just wish I could hear. All right, sounds good. Southbound 95. Hey, be a brand and be ready for gas down there. DW Parkway again. Holy cow. There's a bunch of cars down there that are wrecked. Well, right now we're working our way southbound the BW Parkway from I-95. This chase has been rather uh, interesting as far as the uh, uh, police um, uh, involvement in there. Right now we have about five or six cars behind this suspect. This suspect is a homicide suspect, and I'd like to take give you a little bit more, but I'm getting real close to BWI. We're going to continue sending pictures to you guys um, if the anchors want to kind of take this. But we're going southbound BW Parkway, and I've got to start talking to the tower down here because it looks like uh, we're getting so close to their airspace that uh, they're going to need assistance in dealing with traversing the air traffic. We just don't know if it's going to head down towards D.C. or if it's going to head uh, towards the Beltway. Uh, we'll try and give you a little bit update a little bit later on here, but right now southbound 95, just north of the Beltway, is where this individual is in reference to this uh, homicide suspect.
As we get more of we'll updates, you're reporting in Sky Team 11. I'm Captain Boy Taylor. Tower, Sky Team 11. All right, we're working our way southbound the BW Parkway. We're still to the north, northeast of the airport right now. Um, I'll keep you advised as to what the suspect heads if he hits the beltway or if he continues southbound. But this is a homicide suspect that we're working with police on getting it. And I think right now we went to a flight of two. Fox had to go get gas. Okay. Site for Sky Team 11 request visual 7. You didn't pay attention. I'd say we called it as a flight. I called us as a flight, so he already knows we're, what we're dealing with, man. All right. Now, we're flight of two right now, and we're headed uh, northbound on the BW Parkway. Tower, Sky Team 11, we're in luck. He's going northbound now on the BW Parkway, headed back towards the city. All right, we can go back live with this now. We're going away from the airport. We're ready, we're ready, we're ready, we're ready. Northbound, the BW Parkway, northbound 295, north of 695, between 695 and 895. All right, we're ready. Yes, they have been able to apprehend the individual. This is northbound 295, the BW Parkway, between 895 and the Beltway. That's where they were finally with other agencies able to take this individual out as far as stopping his vehicle. Uh, he ended up being pitted by a uh, cruiser. Looked like state police was in the process of assisting with this apprehension that we have here. But if, you, if we pull out, we're going to show you a picture of just how many police cars are here at the scene and how the roadway is pretty much blocked 
just due to this law enforcement activity that happened in Baltimore City, ended up going through several districts of the city, almost all the way down here to BWI Airport, and then working its way back towards Baltimore City when other agencies were able to assist Baltimore City with the apprehension of this individual. Now, northbound to BW Parkway is going to be shut down for a while while they deal with this until they're able to uh, retrieve this vehicle, retrieve any evidence that may be involved. Often the route, obviously, is take the beltway around to circumnavigate this area. We can also tell you that we saw numerous accidents involving this vehicle where other civilian vehicles were involved, and we saw a lot of emergency equipment responding to that. So we're still trying to get more on this. Um, we don't know. As we get to the top of the 4 o'clock hour, you can see there's a fair amount of traffic. And if he continues driving like this, especially through some of these red lights, then they're going to have to pull back and rely on that helicopter to really be their eyes from up above. And at some point here, you're going to see more local jurisdictions take part in this pursuit and potentially even CHP if they are requested. In the meantime, okay, there he is. Uh, he's turning onto, uh, I guess, Valley View Street, uh, Chris, but a lot of congestion in this area. A lot of congestion, and interestingly, this is the second time he's been on Valley View Street, so he's done something of a loop through this part of uh, the county, and that may provide, again, an opportunity uh, for some prediction here. Again, if they can establish a pattern, that's what they're looking for. If he comes back down Valley View Street and they can get units ahead of him, then maybe they can lay down a spike strip. But from my vantage point, he really appears to be driving too fast and too erratic. Uh, I, I just, I don't see that. They don't have the manpower down there to really triangulate in this ki kind of a situation, especially with all the, the traffic this afternoon. He's really uh, just off to the races here, 67 Gosh. miles per hour up Valley View Street, almost double the speed limit as he comes up on another busy mm. intersection, mm -hmm. threw a red light there, not even slowing down, not even a sign of braking as he went right through that red light there. And now we're gonna start to see, I would imagine those lead units start to pull back slightly it's going to be very difficult for them to keep up with him in this kind of traffic as he continues speeding through these intersections especially going 70 plus miles per hour in that big truck and and the way he's just disregarding any kind of traffic stop signs or lights it's a pretty dangerous situation see him go through a few crosswalks as well he's not going to be able to, to stop quickly either if he goes into another one of those intersections against a red light and there's something uh, oncoming or mm -hmm. you know coming across the freeway uh, excuse me the intersection that's yeah. going to be terrible exactly yeah you can't i mean it's very you know driving these trucks on a on, you know under normal conditions yeah. is not like driving a regular car you know dr braking has to be very calculated you can't brake too hard you'll lose control of the vehicle and you certainly can't be uh you know swerving through intersections at a high rate of speed already on several occasions we've seen him make those wide turns extra wide turns occasionally even going into uh, partially into oncoming lanes of traffic fortunately the area that we're talking about here you're not going to see many pedestrians it's a pretty, um, it's, 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 a, it's a very uh, heavily trafficked vehicle area, but where we are now, just mm -hmm. south of Los Alamitos, is really uh, not very prevalent to see a lot of crosswalks as we make our way further towards the west here. Until he gets further towards downtown Long Beach, then we'll start to see some more commercial activity. But right now, he's got a straightaway here along Westminster Avenue and Balsa Chico Road as he continues to do about 75 miles per hour Fortunately, though, they've been able to keep up with him. Seal Beach still has that primary unit about a football field behind that truck. And Chris, do we know from where it was stolen? I, pardon me if, I, if you've already told me that. No, the, uh, the original location, the original agency that began the pursuit was actually Manhattan Beach PD. So they've made their way through the South Bay here, starting near the beach mm -hmm. and uh, ending up all the way down near Seal Beach, which is where it sounds like Seal Beach PD took over this pursuit. I'm not sure if, Man if Manhattan Beach PD even has a unit in the pursuit still. I thought I saw one of their SUVs further back. We'll go ahead and widen out just a second. I think there is more than one agency in that conclusion. 
conglomerate behind him. Uh, that is a Seal Beach pr primary unit. Uh, he's got at least two units, and both of them appear to be Seal Beach. So for right now, Seal Beach is the primary agency taking this over from Manhattan Beach PD, but so far not relinquishing this pursuit. They are still continuing to chase this guy down despite the dangerous driving uh, with only the help of that CHP helicopter. So he's moving further west here into an industrial area uh, just to the east of downtown Long Beach, again, making his way westbound on Westminster Boulevard. Again, two people inside of that truck, and we have no idea what they are hauling in the back. Always another variable when you're talking about these box trucks. We have no idea what the motivation is for this driver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there he is uh, flying by uh, as he continues to get into more congested traffic. That little straightaway was nice because you could tell it was wide open and there weren't a whole lot of people there. But now we're back to the crosswalks, to heavy traffic, and then this is when it gets really dangerous, Chris. Yeah, it's going to get more dangerous here. You can see some houses off to the left there. So a, a, co a combination of uh, residential neighborhoods up ahead here, as well as commercial businesses. And the further west he gets, the closer we're going to get to the busier parts of Long Beach. Uh, and I mentioned what may or may not be in the back. We have no idea what is in the back of this box truck. And it's a good possibility he may not even know what is in the back of that oh truck boy. either. Because oh this is, wow. oh, he's oh almost coming contact there right behind the tree. We'll see here if he made contact with that truck. He might have braked just in time. But I don't think uh, he made contact there. Close call, though, to say the least, behind that tree as he continues weaving through traffic here. Uh, further west, the further west we go, traffic is going to get a little bit busier. I was about to say this was reported to be a stolen U-Haul truck, so he probably does not even know what is in the back of that truck. So it, it, it matters what's in there because if it's an empty truck, the truck will handle one way. Mm -hmm. If there's a lot of cargo in the back of that truck, that's a whole different situation. Either way, a very top heavy vehicle that is difficult to maintain control. Oh, somebody's, oh, look at this. Oh. This is gonna get dramatically more dangerous here if he continues this behavior jumping over that center median, <laughs> trying to lose those units, doing a U-turn, uh, and now going the opposite way. He's now turned around, made a crazy U-turn over that concrete median, and now going eastbound on 2nd Street in the direction he came from. This may prompt Seal Beach to ask for mutual aid here. They may begin asking for more units to help out in this pursuit. They are out of their jurisdiction here, but they are still the primary agency. California Highway Patrol, though, they've been monitoring this the whole time. Also, the LA County Sheriff's Department will likely have units in the vicinity as well. Another wide U-turn there, and now he's going back westbound once again. So uh, he clearly is uh, either making this up as he goes along, or for some reason, is, thinks that these U-turns are gonna lose police, but they are pretty much, uh, I don't wanna say they're right on his tail, they're giving him a, a wide berth here, but uh, you're gonna see a lot more traffic as we're seeing right here coming up uh -oh. on oh. Uh, another busy intersection. Yeah, right. let's see after how he maneuvers way through these uh, cars and if he's gonna hit anybody. I don't think he's hit anybody so far, but we don't know for sure, but this, type of driving, this erratic driving is certainly dangerous and best case scenario, if they could maybe do a spike strip and figure out a pattern if he s starts yeah, driving around in some type of pattern, that's the best case scenario, I guess. It, it just seems like they don't have the personnel to do it unless mm -hmm. they do call for help, as Chris was saying. And then he did loop around twice, but you said he, they have been successful, at least Seal Beach units have been successful to basically stay, stay close to his tail, right, Chris? Right, now he just crossed the, uh, oh. the Long Beach Marina and you're and then still, despite all of that weaving through traffic, I've spotted at least two or three units that have managed to keep up with him throughout all of this crazy driving. It's only gonna get busier the further west we get. And my, my, uh, my worry is that the driving may start to get more aggressive, especially after you see him jumping medians and starting to do, you know, just, really erratic driving like that. that. Here he is, oncoming lanes of traffic over the double yellow lines, a clear glimpse now into the passenger seat, hard to make out uh, if that, pa it looks like the passenger is clutching on, I almost looks like she's clutching on to either a stuffed animal or a baby. I don't know what she's holding on to. She well, is I think covering her face in terror. Yeah, like that might baby be Baby covering her face, that, that could be it, yep. 
Yeah. That could be it. Scared. It was difficult to my see. I know you guys have slightly larger monitors than I yeah. do. You may have a better vantage point, but she is clearly holding something up She's holding against something. her face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the driving uh, wow. continuing oh, down through a parking, a parking lot. lot off of Pomona An Avenue, uh, behind a restaurant, through an alleyway here. Seal Beach pulling off slightly, but they are still very close. They haven't made that turn with them, but he is now speeding through an alleyway mm. behind Covina Avenue near 2nd Street, a commercial district, uh, and now making a right turn into a residential neighborhood just off of Corona Avenue. You can see the helicopter overhead circling, but what we don't see is those Seal Beach units that we saw just a minute ago uh, making these turns with them. Have they, have they pulled back at all? They have, they've pulled back oh, oh, uh, quite a bit, they have. They've pulled out quite a bit, qu pull, pulled back mm -hmm. quite a bit here in the last 30 to 60 seconds. And now he is on his own through this residential neighborhood, CHP circling the stolen U-Haul. Uh, a desperate individual behind the wheel here. And to see that passenger covering her face, if that's indeed what it, it did look like that, uh, it makes you wonder now what is going on with that person is is this person being held under duress uh, w what is going on we can only imagine uh what the situation is or how this started but again this is believed to be a stolen u-haul you can't even rule out the possibility that maybe uh maybe this was a carjacking of some sort and maybe the passenger is completely oblivious to who this person is who's driving this truck i'm i'm, I'm, I'm speculating yeah. here but anything is possible based on what we're seeing here. certainly is is going into some little residential neighborhood now it look like or a cul-de-sac or yeah he may find a dead end in this neighborhood okay. here it might it might oh, be a circle over. he's pulling over parking Okay, he sees that there's going. nobody behind him. He sees a spot where he could dump the vehicle. He's going to walk away here, and the passenger is going to walk with him. The passenger is going to walk away with him. And okay. he is carrying, he or she is carrying uh, a lot of uh, a lot of something, a lot of bags uh, and clothing oh all boy. bundled up there. Really hard to make out a oh. description. But now the driver going in one direction, uh, the passenger moving in a different direction. Now it's really only a matter of uh, seconds or short minutes before law enforcement pulls in here and takes these two down. They are not going to get very far. CHP has good eyes on these suspects. Let's go ahead and widen out just slightly to see if there's anybody in the area here. He's walking along the water. There's a channel that comes from the mm. marina here uh, at, the, uh, at the end of Elliott Street. There's a, a, a marina and now he is walking onto some rocks here. There is not easy access for the cops to get here, but here oh, they, there are, they are pulling into a parking lot. This will either become a foot pursuit unless he surrenders here in the next few seconds. Now oh. walking towards those officers with his hands up. That's a good sign. Certainly appears he's gonna surrender. Uh, Seal Beach now with their guns drawn as he assumes the position. Now proned out on the sidewalk and this has now come to an end. Again, that passenger still outstanding. Uh, walking away from the scene with a, a, a lot of clothing and, and uh, I don't know if that was a shopping bag or whatever, but uh, one person still at large, the driver now being taken into custody at the end of Elliott Street near the marina here in Long Beach. Yeah, that went everywhere, all uh, these different cities, but again, we've said this many times before, but as dangerous as it appeared, we're lucky that uh, something more catastrophic did not happen. And then they had the, had the wherewithal to not only get out of the vehicle, but he gave up when the officers arrived, which is all good news. Yeah, it's still a question. Theft auto uh, of a stolen Jaguar still doing about a buck 20 westbound on the 10 freeway. Coming up on the East LA interchange any minute here. Still going over 110 miles per hour. Is he in the interchange? I can't make out. It looks like he is in the LA interchange, transitioning now, transitioning possibly onto the 101 freeway, northbound, northbound 101, northbound 101, heading straight for downtown, over the LA river now.
all over the road, all over the freeway, encountering a little bit of traffic now, slowing down for the first time as traffic is slowing down in front of him. And he is all, did he just get off there? No, that's him, yeah, he got off, got off the freeway. Off the 101 in Chinatown, off the 101 in Chinatown, coming up on Spring Street. Coming up on Spring Street, a right turn southbound on Spring. Southbound Spring, coming up on downtown LA. Light traffic as he goes south of the 101 freeway. That is City Hall, coming up on City Hall. Didn't see him come out the other side of that building. Did he turn? You saw him? There he is, there he is, Westbound Temple. Westbound Temple from City Hall. He was at Spring Street there, turned off, and now he's at a red light over the double yellow lines, and now he comes up on some cross traffic through the red light. Downtown LA, a high-speed pursuit of the stolen Jaguar continuing now. Westbound Temple, and he is heading straight for the 110 freeway. Straight for the 110, going through every red light. A left turn, a left turn, southbound, southbound fig. This is going to put him onto the freeway, I think. Southbound Fig through downtown LA, and now it sounds like L uh, the uh, CHP may be pulling off here. That's southbound Figaro, yep. Southbound Fig, nobody behind him. A right turn, a right turn, westbound, westbound third. Getting onto the freeway, getting onto the 110. This is gonna put him on the southbound side of the 110. Southbound 110 freeway in the heart of downtown LA, continuing now onto that entrance ramp. Southbound 110 freeway, CHP trying to figure out where they lost him here. They pulled back momentarily. We're going to stick with it, continuing southbound 110 freeway through downtown LA. Next interchange is going to be the 10 freeway, doing about 90 miles per hour, P flying. This guy is flying past everybody, now upwards of 100, pushing 100 miles per hour. Southbound 110 freeway, coming up on the, one, coming up on the 10, coming up on the 10 in just about 10 seconds. Ninety away, here we go. Which agency? Which agency? Which air unit? Christina, you copy? Do you know which agency? You said Riverside Sheriff? Thank you. Mark and Giovanna, here we go. You said Riverside Sheriff?
high performance mark and high speeds upwards at some points of 125 mile per hour. This pursuit has gotten so dangerous, it's been in and out of pursuit mode. Started somewhere in the East LA area, possibly in Riverside co County. Uh, the Riverside County Sheriff's helicopter is up here with us tracking this, what is believed to be a stolen Jaguar. Eventually, CHP got involved. They let it go. He made his way into downtown LA, got on the 101 freeway, then uh, sped right through downtown LA off the freeway, got onto the 110 freeway just a few moments ago, and again, flying at upwards of 100 miles per hour southbound on the 110 freeway. They lost him momentarily. Now, as I mentioned, that helicopter uh, has a visual once again, but right now there's nobody behind this Jaguar. Now, we believe it's a stolen Jaguar. We know there's obviously a driver in there, but unclear whether there's anybody else in there with him at this point. But the driving has been not only very, very fast, but it's been extremely erratic, really weaving across lanes, going through red lights when he was on surface streets, and uh, now showing signs of maybe getting off the freeway again here, using that shoulder to get around anybody in his way. Traffic's moving along here. It's not bumper to bumper, but you can see he is just desperate to flee as fast as he possibly can. He's really pushing the pedal to the metal in this newer model Jaguar, southbound 110 freeway through South LA, Giovanna and Mark. Trying to squeeze through, I'm gonna squeeze through here. Uh oh. Whew. East on Manchester, east on Manchester, under the 110 freeway, now moving away from us here. He's under the freeway, under the overpass, right? He did not come out the other side. Did not come out the other side yet. This is always a tricky point. It's always a telltale sign. If they're looking to dump the vehicle, sometimes they will stop under the freeway. He's out of the vehicle. The vehicle's rolling. The vehicle is rolling into the intersection. He is on foot under that freeway. He is under the overpass, and there is nobody behind him. He may very well walk away from this crime. Now, look at this. That Jaguar is moving on its own, <laughs> bumping into that van. This is incredible. I th That driver's seat, by all by my observation is empty, and now that Jaguar is coming to a stop there in the middle of the intersection at Manchester Boulevard at uh, either Broadway or Main, they're just one block uh, past the freeway there, and as for that driver, he may very well be long gone, guys. It's always difficult. When this happens under a freeway overpass, uh, I just there's no sign of it. Meanwhile, this car is still rolling along here in idle. Now, on several occasions, we did see debris fly out of the vehicle. Unclear what it was, if it was anything of, uh, of importance, if it was evidence of some sort, if it was drugs, if it was a weapon, we have no idea. But uh, he was certainly uh, pushing his luck here and also stepping on that gas pedal at very high speeds as he made his way through Riverside and L.A. County uh, looking for that perfect hiding spot or a perfect place to dump the vehicle. And this is a new one on me, literally uh, just left the vehicle rolling uh, without anybody behind him. There was no law enforcement on scene out here to even take custody of the stolen Jaguar. So somebody's stolen Jag is now rolling through South LA with nobody in it. I can't say I've seen this before. Meanwhile, that driver is long gone, guys. Nobody hurt. Here comes California Highway Patrol. Look at this. He's ro the car is rolling right into traffic. The car is in, appears to be in idle, just rolling through the intersection. Here comes CHP. Uh, what are we going to see here? A pit? I mean, God only knows. We I, th This is a new one on me, guys. Try and open the. Try and open it up. Try and open it up. Is it okay? It's open, and here, here it comes to an end. Into a pole. Ah, shucks, he says.
vehicle, oh, another now one. running for it. There comes oh, another yeah. passenger out of the back seat. These kids are struggling, and oh, look he's at this. Get he's in. getting back in the vehicle. Another one back in the vehicle, and finally, CHP in the pursuit now, right behind, is that CHP or Sheriff's? Yeah, CHP right behind him here. We're gonna forget about that one passenger, but we now know of the driver and at least one other passenger. These were young men that jumped out of that vehicle, and now the pursuit continues uh, through the Santa Clarita Valley. Guys, this is very, very dangerous. Yeah, Extremely dangerous. Right, and considered armed, all three of them, so that, that's a very dangerous situation there, and just the way he's driving through the- Oh my oh gosh, my goodness. Oh, way. into wrong oncoming way. lanes of traffic, going the wrong way now, jump oh that boy. median, and he is continuing the wrong way on Valencia Boulevard, Ooh. approaching Railroad Avenue. Uh -oh. Look at this, oh, continuing oh, oh, with oh. LAP. Look at this, oh my God. Oh my goodness. That was close. A near head-on collision, very, very close. A very close call there, one of several that we've seen here, and it's just getting more and more aggressive by the second. At least he's going the right way now, but showing no signs of slowing down. Not at all. And I think about that guy who jumped out of the vehicle, and then now he jumped back in the vehicle, and how did he change his destiny right. when it comes to how this play thing is going to play out? They are... It's so dangerous the way they're driving right now. If they are insistent on continuing this, this is not going to end uh, in, in a good way. It's going to be a tragedy. Yeah, I think he saw an opportunity to jump, you know, drop his buddies off. And then the one kid saw the cop pulling up behind him and he figured, let me just get back in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. That's what it seems like happened there. But they have no, ch no chance of getting away after this. I mean, this is absolutely uh, a dangerous pursuit that law enforcement just can't let this go. This has to come to a stop immediately. So you're gonna see this entire area flooded with black and whites here within the next few minutes as he continues now through this parking lot and now coming back out uh, the other side, back onto Valencia Boulevard, getting around that traffic. Soledad, and what was that? Bouquet Canyon and Soledad, got it. So he's on Bouquet Canyon now, off of Soledad, continuing westbound away from Magic Mountain. All right, so he's flying down uh, in Santa Clarita right now. Uh, luckily, though, and I'm not familiar with the traffic patterns in Santa Clarita, but these roads look wide open. The dangerous part of that is he could really open up the speed and, and, and get moving in this vehicle that, again, I'll reemphasize, it's going to be really hard to stop if it has to. Yeah, the further away he gets from the five, you can see traffic is a lot less. Opens up the road, as you mentioned, but at the same time, there's just, a much tra there's just enough traffic in the way here to really get somebody hurt, especially if he continues driving like this, blowing through red lights. And uh, if I really hope we don't see him get back into oncoming lanes of traffic. He, sh he jumped over that median without any hesitation whatsoever and you saw just how close he came to another head-on collision, but at least he's back going the, uh, he's going eastbound on Soledad. Eastbound Soledad, and now making a left turn into what appears to be an apartment complex or a condominium, a U-turn through the entrance there. Now gonna, okay, he's going in circles. He's really toying with this officer here, just doing a circle around this group of cars, and he's into this apartment complex now, which I think leads him to a dead end. We'll widen out just a second and see if that's the case. You can see LAPD with their airship overhead, California Highway Patrol on the ground down there, now face to face with this uh, CHP officer. He's going for a run. They're both jumping out. Driver and passenger jumping out of the vehicle, running through this apartment complex. Unfortunately, only that one officer that we saw here. Not sure if they're familiar with this complex. If they live in this area, no idea. But in any event, they're running through here on uh, private property, waiting for more deputies to arrive on scene. I'm not sure that that one CHP cruiser is going to be able to catch up with them here. But they are continuing to race through these condos here in Santa Clarita. We'll see where this takes them. All right. Uh, uh, sorry, go ahead, Giovanna. Uh, Jess, Chris Christie, uh, this is uh, Giovanna Lada and alongside uh, Mark Brown, we're joining you now. And what a wild pursuit these guys are driving or have been driving so dangerously. And now we are looking at them running through this complex, putting the people who live here likely uh, in danger. That's right, trying to get the name of this apartment complex one more time, but the good news is that LAPD still has their air
airship overhead. He's able to call out the location and get those officers, even though this is a mutual aid situation. They're going to get uh, 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 the uh, L.A. County Sheriff's Department involved here as they scale these fences, jumping through backyards, zigzagging their way through this apartment complex. It's now been several minutes since they've lost that uh, initial pursuing officer. Look at this, hiding in the bushes now, looking for any nook or cranny to hide out thinking they might be able to get away with this. These are two suspects of three. One suspect jumping out of the vehicle, the moving vehicle earlier in the pursuit, and now these two looking for a hiding spot, but they have just way too many eyes on them at this point, guys. Yeah, you know, if we can see them, we know the sheriffs can see them and the LAPD can see them, at least from their airship. They're not getting away. Get, can you give me some uh, a sense of the location here? We know it's Santa Clarita and it's uh, a volatile situation. They're, th here's the problem. If you live in this area, they're in somebody's, they've gone through backyards and they're, they're, they're gonna look to see if there's any open or, or unlocked doors. Open if you doors. live here, yep. lock your doors immediately. Lock your doors just as soon as you can. There are two people armed, possibly armed, thought to have been armed, who are now running around in your neighborhood going through backyards. One more time, Jay. Yeah, that's right, Mark. Trying to get across street here. We're just off of Soledad Canyon Road. And again, trying to get a, yeah. trying to get an exact location. Thank you for that, Jay. Yeah, they're, they're moving towards this pool area. It looks like a pretty big apartment complex. They're on the rear side of it now, just looking for a spot to hide out. Unfortunately, I cannot tell you the name of this side street that they're coming up on. Actually, it looks like more of a bike path, potentially, yeah. behind the apartment. Oh, look, there's, there's like, people there. The there's pool. folks there. Look yeah, at this. They, they're now approaching the pool with people in the pool, oh. people enjoying their Wednesday afternoon, and these two are just running right along the pool deck looking for a hiding spot. We have to remind you, these two are believed to be armed. As they run through here, they're believed to be armed grand theft auto suspects that now pose oh, and now a they're danger surrendering. to this community, but apparently they see law enforcement within their line of sight yeah, here. There's are. the officers with their guns drawn approaching the suspects. Thankfully, appears they're finally giving up. One LAPD, one LA County Sheriff. Deputy, both approaching these suspects with guns drawn, they immediately dropped to the now on the wrong side of the good. road. This is some extreme driving, okay. hitting uh, almost 80 miles an hour here, continuing northbound. We were using that median lane, and now we're back on the right side of the lane. Now this driver's hopefully slowing down a little bit, going through uh, that. Uh, you know, hopefully that uh, intersection oh, had a green light. And now we're hitting some traffic, so we're slamming okay. on the brakes and oh, going and back onto the shoulder himself. here. There's a parked oh, car. On? We're going to go onto the sidewalk now. It's going to be hard to see here as we go under a tree we're going to see that car come back out uh out from that driveway from using that sidewalk hopefully lapd was able to get around that car as well and we're continuing northbound now on crenshaw uh really excessive rates wow. of speed definitely unsafe for this neighborhood if you're in the mid-city area uh just stay off the roads if you can and lock your doors because you don't know if this driver may try to uh jump out of the car if he gets stuck uh that could definitely lead to a very dangerous situation it looks like lapd taking no chances they're getting around this traffic as well and those 77th division officers who've been following this pursuit from the very beginning are staying very close to this vehicle now that first uh patrol car right behind Ooh, the vehicle oh, oh. they have it the doors like open it. and it looks like uh, we may have had he some might. contact here between yes. the suspect looks vehicle like and that wide. silver nissan over there on the yes. right side Looks and it looks like this driver almost in a panic oh, now and a truck may be getting involved possibly blocking him in this truck it's, 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 it's hard this to tell if this truck is trying to get involved no, or if this is just like accidental. It's absolutely but intentionally the, trying the, uh, to get involved the, uh, in this. The suspect driver is almost pinned in there. You can see LAPD seeing, uh, seeing the situation, and the suspect has hands out of the window. This is definitely a good sign. Uh, who knows if this truck is possibly law enforcement or just a concerned citizen. LAPD has guns drawn, and the suspect has their hands out of the window, and hopefully, after we saw this pursuit go through a very dangerous phase on surface streets from Crenshaw, Crenshaw Boulevard, north of the 10. Hopefully, we're seeing this thing come to an end here now. Yeah, I'm wondering about this, uh, this uh, the truck. You, you're kind of thinking, I hope that truck stays there, but I'm also kind of concerned for that uh, person inside the cab because 
if you yeah, they're if asking they, him to leave. Yeah, just get out of the car. Exit the vehicle. They're telling him yeah. to get out. They're yes. telling him yeah. to get out. And these LAPD officers have to also be concerned of the drivers that were going southbound on Crenshaw. They're yelling at them to get out of the way too, to leave their cars parked and I get out of the way because there's the issue of crossfire. If officers have to use their weapons for any reason, exactly. they want to make sure that there's nobody in harm's way. Okay. You can see that suspect not using the door for some reason <laughs> and climbing out of the window, hands on the pavement, Maybe they and told he's going him to, to continue. Do Yes. Trying to climb out of the window. Yes. That would be a very uh, unusual way uh, for officers to tell a suspect to get out of the vehicle. But Maybe they don't you know never to, know. Maybe they actually don't know how to get out of the cars. Every now and then you get into a car and you can't figure out where the handle is to get out of the car. And you're kind of freaking out now that you have to get out of the car so quickly. Because it looks like Good his point. pants are stuck there. And that, there is nothing easy about this uh, exit of the vehicle. That's for sure. He does look stuck at this point in LAPD. They may be using this other vehicle on the top right of the frame to try and get a little bit closer to the suspect and use the vehicle as a source of cover. They're going to use the yes, door to get are. a little bit closer and hopefully yes. uh, either grab the suspect and bring him into custody that way or at least get close enough to be able to see if the suspect is actually stuck or uh, if he's dealing with something else. Right, and he may be under the influence. That is always uh, a possibility. And we, we did see him throw one gun out of the vehicle they do not know if he has if he has any other uh, weapons in that vehicle so they have to take every precaution possible yeah uh, it is odd that the suspect is uh, climbing out the window we do wonder why he didn't just open the door but clearly uh, thought it was going to be a much easier uh, exit as well it, did not realize like they'd be stuck right there stuck? on the window sill of the I mean I can't I feel I feel for the suspect trying to get out of this car right now. It it, it can't get out. They can't get out quickly, and well, all these the, officers the are nervous. A lot of people nervous. in danger this <laughs> afternoon. So no, um, I'm just saying in general how yeah, you yeah. how you can get that the officers are trying to figure out how do we get you out of there without putting our lives at risk as well. It's, it's a precarious and almost uh, you know a borderline dangerous position because uh, we are in a very populated area. We're in the middle of the mid-city neighborhood in the middle of Crenshaw Boulevard. There's apartments and homes on both sides of the roadway. It's hard to tell if those, uh, what the suspect may have dropped there in front of them, but he does appear to be stuck. So definitely an almost embarrassing situation for this right. suspect to be in. LAPD working on what their plan is going to be. I thought for a moment they were going to use that car on the right side as a shield to try and get uh, close to the suspect and help him that way. But it looks like they're going to continue uh, uh, issuing commands to the suspect and hopefully getting him to exit the vehicle in a proper manner or at least uh, find a way to uh, his pants are you down. Know, help him crawl out of the vehicle some other way. It, it, it looks like you know, the feeder through the stuck, sunroof. But here he, he is coming through. He's making... He's, he's crawling there. out, that was very he graceful. rolls over, <laughs> and it does appear, sorry, you know, judging laugh. by this kind of behavior, no, yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's highly dismount. unusual. It's